I can talk about the importance of rewrites and anti web. He saved me for a 40 minutes of what I. Uh, uh, he saved me the, a lot of, explaining a lot of the things. Uh, in answer to the last question, uh, well, A, why isn't the web more read-write? Well, A, because the, you know, the do web of documents isn't really done. It's not really perfect. We still don't have good, uh, get good multimedia collaborative spaces yet. Uh, but anyway, most people spend their time, uh, you know, people spend more time absorbing than creating. That's normal. Uh, I think if you look at what you do, if you look at what people do for off web, People spend a lot of time reading newspaper articles and very few, on average, writing newspaper articles. If you look at people, what people do with data, when people who use spreadsheets very, yeah, you know, some people spend a lot of time wandering through visualizations, but in the world of spreadsheets, it's very much people make their own spreadsheets. They don't, you know, they, yeah, they use other people's, but, it, but the ratio is much bigger. It may be 10 to 1 instead of sort of hundreds of thousands to 1. Um, so, uh, so I think the read write web is important and all the things that go along with it, uh, 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 such as uh, having uh, stores which are independent of the application so that you have a, con a generic store protocol. So that I think what's very important about uh, my vision for the future of this read write web is that you, have, you can design an application and it will run on existing stores so that we have an application to store interface which is <coughs> designed uh, generically so that stores, storage becomes commodity. Uh, the stores are in control of the user, which is a massive social change to the current situation with the siloed social nets, uh, social networking sites. Uh, and so the, the, I think this is really important. This is the thing which really actually gets me out of bed in the morning. It actually got me out of bed uh, several hours ago to write some code before I came here. Uh, so, um, because I think that if we get to a certain point, it's all going to happen. There is places where this is happening. Certainly, the group at MIT is doing it. Sandra, if you talk to Sandra over there, Wave, Sandra Hawk, uh, for example, will uh, tell you some of the things that's ha happening there. Uh, other people around. Is anybody here in the Read Write Web community group at W3C? Anybody here in the Link Data Platform working group? OK, so we have a few people. So those are centers, because I think it is important, actually, to standardize this stuff. Uh, we've had a few years of people doing stuff in corners which, uh, and doing demos. But to get the thing to take off, we've got to get the storage to be a very, very cheap commodity so that everybody who provides you with any form of web space will, all, will give you read, write, link data. And then applications, uh, and then the applications will take off. Um, yes, we'll need, because these storage systems will have to do the access control, you'll have to be able to tell your storage s system who to give access to something, even though it doesn't understand the data in there. So we'll have generic graphs being written, but the concept of identity and the concept of group and everything to do with the social pieces which uh, drive the access control, we'll have, we will have to have a global model. So it's, you know, it's very important for me that if Facebook is serving some of your uh, social graph, which it is, if I want to get, uh, uh, if I have a, uh, a group of, say, friends on Facebook, um, I, then I can use that as the target of an access control uh, list on somewhere else. So I can tell to, I can go to Flickr and say, oh, I'll have my LinkedIn colleagues and my Facebook friends will have access to this, to this photo. That's kind of something you can't do at the moment. There are lots of, there are lots of projects out there which are doing custom APIs for exchanging friends and exchanging photos and exchanging things at each level. I think a massive thing that the semantic web, the link, read, write, link data world can give these people is to, um, is this common platform with a defined API. You've got Sparkle for querying it. You've got Sparkle update for updating it. If you look to the link, the link data platform is where that's getting nailed and it's being nailed as something as simple as possible. So it's all based on REST. It's just these, are, these, these graphs. There are documents which, which give you RDF. They get, you get turtle back. You don't have to parse XML. Uh, it's sort of the idea is it's very, very simple, very, very uh, so that you end up with a middleware layer. And you can build all your user interface things on top of that. On top of that. So, um, so I think that's, a, uh, that's really exciting to go, to go to those groups. I think that the, I hope that at future conferences, maybe this one, will be seeing competitions and prizes for the first few apps, maybe for the first few, um, for uh, the best open source 
storage software. Uh, maybe for the most uh, enterprising, uh, free uh, 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 server, um, storage service uh, out there. And I think the trick of it will be like everything out there on all the, like all the Web 2.0 sites, which uh, have a viral hook. So that at some point, there's some mechanism by which people uh, get them end up email end up being conned one way or another into emailing all their friends about what a cool app they've just bought. Um, we we'll have to we have to do the same thing. We have to have a have, have to uh, get wise in the art of, of, of viral growth. Uh, but it's always been like that. Any questions?